Touchdown confirmed. We're safe on Mars. Yeah! Time to see where our curiosity will take us. Time, if you can go to the graphic. Um, there's MRO coming along, and we actually took a picture with high rise as MSL came in on the parachute. So you can see the little dot there is MSL moving across. The box shows our image. There's the parachute. And if we zoom in, there we go. <laughs> so I, and this is really a testament to uh, the, the high rise team, uh, Alfred McEwen, the principal investigator, and the high rise operations team at University of Arizona, and the MRO spacecraft team. Now, you saw this this morning, and we're going to scroll down a little bit because we saw something else in this high rise image later, which we believe to be the heat shield. I, I think when uh, those of us on the science team looked at that image for the first time, you, you get this feeling, you know, that's what I'm talking about. That, <laughs> that is why we picked this landing site. And although this, the anticipated scenic beauty was not something that was at the top of the list for reasons to select it, it was certainly one thing that we were hoping would come through one day. So it's, it's awesome to, to see this. And I think when you look down from orbit and, and you get a sense for what you're looking at on the ground, you don't really know what it's going to look like until you're on the ground and then, and then you see it. The really amazing thing about this is all those layers that you're looking at are the layers from orbit that contain the hydrated uh, phyllosilicates and sulfates. So everything in that image uh, there is a science target for us. And, and again, the, the goal here is to drive up eventually, and, and Mike's right, it'll probably take us a year to get there, but when we do, uh, there's a very systematic approach to exploring, moving around through this terrain that looks like it, it was something that comes out of a John Ford movie. Uh, you know, we're going to be driving the rover around in these valleys and looking up at these hills and finding the places where the strata come down and intersect the topography that the rover can, can drive through. And we know it can because there's so much great data from orbit that allowed us to simulate the drives before we chose this landing site to demonstrate that we could make it up through, through this terrain. We're going to start out. The first chapter is going to be what we've got in the landing ellipse, which looks pretty darn exciting already. And then we're going to head out of the landing ellipse and go towards that green star. And that's where the clay minerals are, are, are forming the layers. And then after we're done with those, we're going to head up into the third chapter and look at these sulfates where the yellow star is. And then after we're done with that, we can go up to the top. And now we've gone through hundreds and hundreds of meters. And just for reference, with the Opportunity rover, we've been working seven years, we've gone through about 20 meters of rock. What we see here in this image is hundreds of meters of rock. So we have that, more, that many more pages to, to read in this book of the early environmental history of Mars. And just one thing that, in addition to these minerals that we can see from orbit that gives us uh, a lot of excitement for this site, is in the next slide, the blue star is a feature that we can see from orbit that's been published, uh, observed elsewhere on Mars by the high-rise team led by Alfred McEwen. We see these fracture systems. They occur all over Mars. And in some places, they are spectacularly developed. Gale Crater is one of them. And they're not down at the bottom of the mound. They're developed hundreds of meters up into that story about the environmental evolution. And what we see, the, the fracture that that blue star is on, if you look at that thing, it makes a line. And notice that there's a dark line right in the middle. On either side, there's two white lines. Those two white lines tell us that that was likely an open space in which there was water 
that filled in with minerals, and that's the kind of thing that we think is a very bright prospect for a habitable environment. So to summarize, we have many attractive uh, uh, possibilities at Gale. We think it has exceptionally high diversity for different kinds of habit habitable environments, and it is possible that some of those might preserve organic carbon. Yeah, this high-rise camera is incredibly valuable because you can see this table from orbit. And so that means we could come up with accurate models in advance of arriving there and drive them across the terrain and make sure we can do it. So we had multiple paths that we, can, that we found that we can get, get us up through those layers. Okay. Um, and if you were to get all the way to the summit, can you even guess at how long that would take? The full year? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, I think basically where the blue star is, that would probably take us two years to get there. And then after that, as I said, you know, the, the warranty expires. But if history is a predictor of the future, we, we expect to have, you know, some, some future life left to go. But if we, if we were to go on for 10 years, we think we could just keep climbing. It's going to take years to get to the top if it's possible. When, one of the issues with how fast we go is how long we spend on the scientific investigations. So it's not just a matter of the engineering capability of, of driving, it's, it's the fact that there's a, 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 a sort of rich suite of things to, to look at. And so there's a balance between characterizing what, where you're at and going to see the next thing. And that's, that'll be a very exciting part of the mission.